What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Monday. Welcome back. That's right. Back on the grind. Hope you had a great weekend. Having a look at what is going on, Bitcoin is up 1.27%. Now, we're still kind of stuck in the same area we've been in. In fact, yesterday, we were almost saying to ourselves, is this market a little bit boring right now? Well, you are seeing some of the altcoins in mild red. Bitcoin up slightly, but Bitcoin did have a little bit of an erratic overnight, okay? You can see right here, I mean, we pretty much we're going well after we had this uh this dump from around 10,377 we had this uh kind of sideways pattern this crazy wick down to 9,000 881 and then we pumped all the way up to $10,700 before resuming basically back where we were but if you have a look at this it really, if you just erase everything that happened here, it looks like we are still trending slightly upwards, right? So I do want to talk about that moving forward, but we did have $52.2 million worth of liquidated shorts over at BitMEX. So moment of silence, my friends. Also want to talk about a pretty bullish Bitcoin indicator that not a lot of people are talking about right now because, you know, despite the sideways action, there is some pretty positive fundamentals happening in the background. Also, we had this, would you like to earn crypto while you sleep? Sounds like one of those corny ads, doesn't it? Well, we're going to get to that CZ. And if that sounds good to you, well, you guys know what to do. Also, today is Monday, which means we are giving away the Ledger Nano S at the end of today's video. So if you are interested, you can just skip to the end. Also, if you are new to the channel, I do always put timestamps below in the description. So if you ever want to hop to any part of the video, you know, maybe you're not interested in the TA. Maybe you just want to hear the news. Maybe you're just here for the Ledger. I don't know. Anyway, we do have timestamps below. You can definitely check that out. Now, let's Let's give this a quick refresh live. Bitcoin dominance is now up to 69% again. So I'll tell you what, Bitcoin is definitely fighting to hold this dominance and it's going to be difficult for the altcoins to really have their alt season if Bitcoin doesn't let up some of this dominance, right? Good time to accumulate altcoins? That's possible. That's a that's a matter of opinion right now. I mean, you are seeing some altcoins doing well. For example, WanChain is up again, 35% today. We have Synthetics Network, uh, not doing a lot of volume though, but Quant is up again, 7%. Solve, Insight, Golem, Arter, Maker, Komodo. Obviously, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Diamond is uh, also up today. Fear and Greed Index, which we are taking with a grain of salt considering we had a five, okay, before, is currently at 41. But the one thing I do want to say, though, regardless of, you know, everything that's happening with the BitMEX liquidations, we did have volume. And I do think that's a good thing. It was nice to see this volume come in. I mean, you could see, you know, we haven't had volume this high uh, pretty much since back around August 15th. So we definitely had a little bit of a dry spell. That's good. That's showing there's actually people trading, right? This is showing you that there is activity happening. This is positive. Now, one thing that Squeezy said, he does say the effect of cascading margin calls and stop loss triggers causing $300 slippage between XBT perpetual swats on BitMEX versus spot BTC. One word for over leveraged traders, brutal. However, keep in mind these are futures, right? Although we do have things like bots that do look at these different types of prices and often they can trigger situations in the market, right? So we can have a little bit of a sort of a panic sell or panic buy even from these bots. But even if you're just gonna look at that, I do wanna just once again refer back to the chart that we've been looking at. We got stomped out yet again by the daily moving averages. We are still just trapped between these two areas. So, you know, I just wanna show you that it's not just what's happening with the traders, but we have some massive resistance technically on the charts that are holding us down. This is number one right here. The second is you can see we've actually started to put in this downwards trend. Look, we actually wicked up out of it and pulled right back in. So Bitcoin might currently be following this trend all the way down. And I don't want to be bearish, but I am going to just admit that we could potentially go down to about that $9,500 level if we continue to consolidate and get pushed down by this resistance, right? And you would be looking for a breakout basically in the beginning of September, like we've been saying, but that's not the only thing that's been providing resistance. We also just have these simple resistance levels. And you can see right here, we've been pulling this chart up for weeks now. 
now, we have this $10,600 very psychological level. Now, I know on a couple different exchanges, we actually did put in $10,700, most of that being futures, but you could see over here on spot markets, we are having a lot of issues with this level. So it's not like we don't have the resistance. This is why we are getting tighter and tighter. In fact, it's actually kind of weird. Max Kaiser, he said, Bitcoin is this coiled spring about to explode higher. And it actually did, uh, you know, pump up to that uh, $10,625 level. Now, did Max Kaiser pump Bitcoin? Well, I mean, we were getting close to that, like, downwards resistance, right? So maybe he just kind of had a hunch and, and, and said that that was going to happen. But it was kind of funny. But that being said, we are still being supported by this trend. We're not in the danger zone. We are still putting in higher lows. You can see over here on this curve that I have, we've still basically been exactly touching it. So like I said, you know, if we were to wick down, you know, I wouldn't expect us to go lower than about 9,800 as long as we respect this current curve. This one is a little bit longer. Looks like it wants to end around mid-September, but we are looking for a breakout or breakdown much sooner than that. But I do want to once again just reference what Plan B had said for, you know, everyone saying, you know, the, there's a lot of uh, perma bears out there that are like, oh, we got to go back down to 2,000, 3,000, 1,000. Well, I just want to point out once again that like Plan B says, after each all-time high, Bitcoin price drops until a lot of miners aren't profitable. We've spoken about this. This already happened. We had that major miner capitulation in November, right? They switch off their hardware, hash rate drops, difficulty adjusts downward until miners become profitable profitable again and then it rises difficulty bottom 100% and then you start the new bull market now you can see down here uh, Bitcoin Finney actually says, so based on the lower high trend, uh, should be seeing a top out around 1,000 to 2,000 percent. Bitcoin price difficulty low, 3,500 USD, equals about a 35,000 to $70,000 Bitcoin somewhere between 2020 and 2023. But Plan B says, actually, 2,000 percent would be really, really low. It could as well be 10,000 percent. 100x average of last two all-time highs would actually put Bitcoin at around $350,000 per one Bitcoin by 2023. So you got to think to yourself, okay, the risk to reward ratio of just owning Bitcoin. Now, I'm not saying, you know, throw everything you have into Bitcoin. Clearly, guys, I'm very biased. I have a crypto channel. I talk about Bitcoin. But realistically speaking, just try to get one freaking Bitcoin. I mean, just imagine if one Bitcoin actually did go to $350,000. I mean, that would be incredibly life-changing money, I would say, for most of us. I mean, just think about that. I mean, you could buy well, you can buy a lot of things. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money, but just think about it, right? Now, having a look at the Bitcoin dominance, well, we noticed that Bitcoin dominance is going back up yet again. In fact, it absolutely refuses to really move very much or deviate much from this 70% level. So that is definitely giving a, well, it's giving altcoins basically a run for their money right now. But here's the thing I wanted to point out. And here's the one thing, the fundamental chart we should be looking at right now. And this is the long-term chart that reflects the superior deep safety and global seamlessness and monetary soundness of Bitcoin. And this is from Nick Zabo. And he's talking about this right here. You can see that the volatility is actually at a extremely low point. In fact, it's lower than this low point uh, he was pointing out that we had back in 2013. He also mentions this chart the capitalization of Bitcoin that's realized, which you're going to get into in just a second. But I actually do like what Dr. Bitcoin says down here. We are extremely, uh, still extremely early, over 100 years away from the last Bitcoin being mined. If this was a baseball game, we are still listening to the national anthem, be an uh, anthem being sung. Excuse me, can't talk today, guys. I like this tweet. I'm actually going to just going to retweet this one. Kind of like that. It's a positive retweet on a Monday, guys. We got we to gotta get the Monday going. But anyway, having a look right here, you can see that the Bitcoin realized cap has actually hit right here. You know, you can see you can go. I'll drop this chart below if you guys want. We have hit an all-time high for the realized cap at $1 billion. Now, you're probably saying, well, what is the realized cap? Well, essentially, it is calculated from multiplying the price each Bitcoin last traded by the size...
of each trade, okay? So this, and the reason that this is important, by the way, you might be saying, what is the point of this? Well, this is showing you that there actually is activity. They're talking about Bitcoin actually being actively traded, actively used. You're showing activity on the network. So for people that are saying, oh, there's nothing happening, you know, Bitcoin's not being used, it's not being exchanged. I mean, yes, guys, a lot of it may potentially be wash trading, but you know, when you look at the top exchanges, the real 10, okay, you see that we still do have actual volume coming in, especially like we saw this morning. So, but I thought this was a good statistic to bring up, something that I wanted to mention. Also, I wanted to talk about what Clive McDonald said. Now, he's the head of equity strategy at Standard Chartered, and he says, I don't want to get doom and gloom here, but the potential of a U.S. recession is the biggest concern as on date, adding that the chances of a U.S. recession have jumped from 25% to about 40% now. So as concerns of the recession continue to grow, investors are putting their money into, we know gold for sure. We've seen gold pumping. And although Bitcoin is having a bit of a sideways movement, you're not seeing Bitcoin dump, right? Right. Of course, anything could happen. I put this video out. But that being said, you're not seeing people running out of Bitcoin, right? Also, just to mention, on uh, the tw- well, it was last Friday actually, China imposed fresh new tariff duties worth about seventy five billion of imported goods from the U.S. Now, stay with me. I know you're probably wondering how this is all going to tie in. You know, I always tie it in. So this was basically a retaliatory measure to the earlier hike in tariffs imposed by the U.S. on $300 billion worth of Chinese goods. Now, look, they go on to this tweet storm that Donald Trump had. You guys probably already saw this. I'm sure a lot of people were talking about it. But you can see scrolling down here, investors are heading to Bitcoin and gold. We're going to get into the charts in just a second. And in Grayscale's latest report, don't forget, they own 1% of all Bitcoin, and they're accumulating about 21% of all of the freshly mined Bitcoin over the counter. These guys are pretty serious. With continued adoption, they say, Bitcoin represents a transparent, immutable, and global form of liquidity that can provide both wealth preservation and growth opportunities. As a result, they say we believe it deserves a steady, strategic position within many long-term investment portfolios. Now, you also have Nelson Minier, the head of the OTC crypto exchange Kraken, saying that it is still too early to call Bitcoin a safe haven, right? But remember, we did speak about Bitcoin compared to gold, and most of the gains that were made were made purchasing gold in the 1970s, right? Well, I mean, give or take when you purchased it. But that being said, those were the times, and they did compare Bitcoin to gold in the 70s, but... He says, I'm not so sure that it's a safe haven asset yet, but I do think that it's starting to act like one. I think that people are starting to portfolio manage and they're starting to come in slowly. And when the market is getting shaky, you're noticing Bitcoin is rising. Now, here's the interesting thing. Bitcoin's been going sideways. We had a little bit of a pump. We pulled back, right? But you are seeing gold actually recently hit this, uh, you know, 1,570 high. People are freaking out. It's recently pulled back a little bit again. Had a pretty exciting opening this morning. But here's the thing to note, okay? Like Rept Cryptography says, the gold market cap is up 250 billion. Well, it was in the past 24 hours. So that means gold in just the last 24 hours, even though it has pulled back, was up the entire entire market cap, more than the entire market cap of Bitcoin. So if that, this little move right here, okay, you got to just think about how early we are. That's really what I just try to stress. Everybody goes, oh, you know, we're, I'm too late to the party. You know, I missed Bit. You know, people were saying they missed the boat when Bitcoin turned 100. And then when Bitcoin was $1,000, people said it was too late to get in. And then when it was 5,000, it was too late to get in. Well, now Bitcoin is 10,000. You know, what are you going to wait till it's 100,000, 450,000, a million? I mean, guys, you've seen the charts, right? So that's just that moving forward, talking about the gold market cap. But the other thing, too, the big problem is still that people do not understand Bitcoin. For example, you have Asia Murphy saying, I don't get Bitcoin. Reverend Howard Arson replies, imagine if keeping your car idling 24-7 produced solved Sudokos and you could trade for heroin. I don't know if I said that right. I always pronounce that word wrong. But basically, do you understand what I'm trying to say? This is still the uh, the perception of it. And I do like this response down here. People who hate on Bitcoin are tedious. If you have the conviction that Bitcoin is essentially worthless, well, you could trivially short it and make boatloads of money. And that's what I say, guys. There's opportunities, right? You can go on BitMEX. You can use CME Futures. You can use Bybit. 
Short the bitch. If you think Bitcoin's going to zero, short it. You could make a hell of a lot of money, right? Put your money where your mouth is, Bitcoin bears, right? Or Bitcoin non-believers or no-coiners. And obviously, guys, I'm not speaking to you in the audience. I know everyone watching this video, you guys rock. But, you know, there are a lot of people out there that still don't get it. They bash it. It's misrepresented. And I think there's still a lack of education when it comes to the space and understanding. But that being said, I do want to keep this video quick today. I got a lot of stuff to do. I'm actually trying to revamp the studio kind of want to upgrade it a bit. You know, we've been sort of doing the whole style like this for a while. Kind of a boring time, figured why not, but that's what I'm doing. Anyway, Binance is now offering lending. <laughs> Some people are saying this is like BitConnect, you know, locking your tokens up and getting paid a percentage. I, guys, I don't know. I mean, do I recommend leaving coins on exchanges? No, you know my opinion on that. I mean, I don't think you should ever leave your coins on an exchange longer than you just need to make the trade, but what are you gonna do? So they're saying you could get 15% annualized in just 14 days with Binance. They have USDT and they also have Ethereum Classic as well. And that's 7% annualized. So if you wanna check that out, you can guys, you're more than welcome to look into that, but also speaking about futures and other options as well, I do wanna just remind you guys that the next coin on X futures, which is basically where you can trade futures of coins that haven't even hit exchanges yet, okay? So they have video coin coming out. Um, so basically it says you could sell it, trade it, et cetera. This is actually happening today. In fact, by the time the video's out, this should already be happening. They did have a, um, they do these, um, webinars each time um, and the available trading pair will be USDT. So obviously the advantage of this is that you don't have to actually own the token. You don't have to actually get involved in the sale. But the cool part is if you do hold this token, once they do release it, then it would be swapped out for an actual vid token. So that's happening today, which is one day before the actual KuCoin thing. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Also, one more bit of Coin news today, we do have blockchain-based internet browser Brave has continued expanding its crypto tipping options by integrating it now into Reddit and also into Vimeo as well. If you guys don't know, by the way, I am a verified Brave browser publisher, so if you guys ever are sick of watching the ads on these YouTube videos, you can watch ad-free. You can just download the Brave browser. I do have a link below. You get $5. I, I think they're still doing the $5 thing. I don't. I honestly haven't checked in a while, but they were giving $5 away of basic attention tokens moving forward. But that being said, guys, this is definitely going to be a very interesting move. A lot of eyes are on it. Um, you know, it would be unfortunate if we did have sort of what, what happened when we got to the end of the wedge in November where we dumped down, you know, but hey, it would be a great opportunity to accumulate. And honestly, I don't think we would stay down there that long. Although I do have a hunch that considering that we are in a macro bull trend, it might be to the upside, but don't forget there are some people that are waiting for us to go down and hit that 21 exponential moving average on the weekly, which is sitting around $9,000, okay? So just keep that in mind moving forward, but I do not want to end on a bad note. In fact, we have to get into the Ledger Nano S giveaway. So we had seven videos last week. Uh, we have to do a random number generator, first of all, to figure out when we're going to do that. So one through seven, seven. Okay, so that was yesterday's video. All right, so this is for the Ledger Nano S. Hopefully you, you guys watched yesterday's video. So we're gonna go in here, um, copy. All right, let's see how many unique comments we have. Uh, sorry guys, had to write something down. Uh, what just happened here? Did we, uh, oh, 671 unique comments. Sorry, I had an idea, I had to jot it down. All right, drum roll please for the Ledger Nano S. We pump, we dump, and the zombie lives. James James, the zombie always lives. You are right, and thank you. You are also the winner. Congratulations, all you gotta do is go over to either the official Crypto Zombie uh, Telegram group. You can find me, I'm an admin. Just message me, message me privately though. You don't have to do it in the group or you can just send me an email if you want. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Let's have a quick look, see what Bitcoin's doing right now. Yeah, we're still just kind of hanging around. So, I mean, I'm looking for, like I said, guys, I'm looking for a bit of a, I seem to have lost it. Maybe coming down here, retesting that $9,500 level. But keep in mind, we could break out of this zone. And if we can push all the way to the top, we might even see an $11,500 Bitcoin. It's possible. We're going to keep our eyes on it. That being said, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. It is Monday. Hope you're enjoying the start to your week. That's all I got.
That's all I got today, guys. Definitely get subscribed if you haven't. Uh, join the Telegram group. It's absolutely free. And once again, I do want to give a massive shout out to everybody that has been supporting the channel by using the referral links below.